what's up guys welcome or welcome back to my channel my name's sage or tonight or whatever you want to fucking call me and today we're here with a story time one of the very few story times y'all will ever get for me i don't usually like doing story times because i don't know i just like keeping like a little bit of personal stuff personal to me you know but i wanted to give this story time because i'm about to start rolling out my old japan vlogs from last summer so i thought that this story time would be like kind of important to put before i start rolling out the videos this story is actually very fucking traumatic for me so i just needed some time to kind of get away from that situation before actually putting it on the internet so if this video is a little bit choppy more choppy than usual it's because girl i'm finding it I'm about it. I'm trying to hold it together. So background, um, last July, last August, I was in Japan for a month. The program was a program that took high schoolers, freshmen to senior year high schoolers to Japan or to like any country like that you apply to. You, like you had to get accepted. I don't fucking know. But they took high schoolers abroad for how ever long the program you chose i was there for a month but it's high school is from all across america like i personally did not go with any of my friends i know some people like both of their friends applied and like they both got in i went by myself so i went on this program knowing absolutely nobody just by myself so going on this trip i made it a point to be a little bit more extroverted and try to talk to more people be more outgoing like i was actively trying to be more outgoing so the program has a bunch of different kids it's like it's like a bunch of us it's like hundreds of us i think i don't even know but it was like a fucking lot of us so they ended up splitting us up into like five or six groups i believe i was in group five and to my understanding everybody kind of just stayed in their own group i don't really know if it was just because i personally didn't so like i didn't like socialize enough but i'm pretty sure everybody kind of just stayed with their group in their groups or whatever you also go to school they split you in half so the first the first half of the groups they were in homestay like they stayed with their fam like a japanese family for the first two weeks and then the second two weeks they went to the hotel we started out on the hotel the first two weeks then the second two weeks we went to homestay and we all went to school together so i knew like i said i knew people from different groups but i didn't know them okay so there was this one girl this is the, who the girl this is the girl that the story is about i i'm gonna call her the barefoot bandit I'm gonna call her the barefoot bandit. Me and the barefoot bandit didn't know, we, I didn't know her like that. I honestly, till this day, I couldn't even tell you her first name. I don't even, I, I don't know who this bitch is. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I don't know who the fuck this is. We went to the same school. We were not in the same class, but we went to the same school and my friends had classes with her and her friends. I'm gonna call her friends, the group. I'm just calling them the groupies. The barefoot bandit and the groupies they they were like a little clique of like three or four white girls i think i don't really remember i don't fully remember i'm gonna tell you all this right now before we even finish this freaking story time this this story is traumatic for you for me my brain blocks out shit that like i don't want to remember so a lot of the story i'm gonna be like i don't really remember because i genuinely don't remember because this entire situation i tried to block out like literally all of japan i've tried to block out i'm gonna get into that later again but just an fyi so they were already like a bit weird but i'm nice to like everyone like even if i think like you're a bit odd when i first meet you i try my best to like just be open-minded because people might think that i'm weird i remember seeing her in the calf because me and my friends we would be in the calf like every night the calf was like kind of like a library study area type of thing so a lot of people from the program would just be sitting there like at night studying or just down there like just hanging out just instead of being in our rooms because you weren't really allowed to have people in your rooms some people still do like we still did that shit i'm not even gonna lie like we still have we still went in each other's rooms and shit but for the most part we all just went into the lobby and also for other reasons we were in the lobby tiffany if you see the shit, Ariana, y'all know, y'all know exactly why the fuck we was in the lobby. <laughs> but we was in the lobby, and I remember seeing her. The reason that I called her the barefoot bandit is because one night this bitch, she was in this dress. 
she was in this it was like the first it was the first week it was literally the first week we were in japan this bitch was in a mind you she's 19 she's 19 she was in a dress like a skimpy short dress we were down in the cat a public area a public area we were down in the calf she had no shoes no socks bare feet on the fucking public floor the bottom of her foot brown bitch you're white the bottom of her foot was brown the bottom of her foot was brown you're disgusting you're disgusting you're nasty like ew oh my gosh and she was wearing this short skimpy ass dress and her panties were out she would li she was literally sitting on the chair like this she was sitting on the chair like this have some fucking decorum we're in a foreign we're in a foreign country have some fucking decorum bitch what is wrong with you like literally when i saw that I, the way I turned to like Ariana and my friends, I was literally like, there's no fucking way. Because you're 19, you're old as shit. Bitch, why are you... Wa Anyways, that's why I call her the Barefoot Bandit. It was a day or two before we were going to switch from the hotel to the homestay. So everyone's packing, everyone's trying to get their laundry done. Keep in mind that the hotel that we're staying in is not a big hotel. It's like a regular ass, like, it's a regular ass size hotel there's like five or six floors and it's not even just like the program people it's the program people plus people that are just in japan just like fucking in the hotel like it's just a regular ass hotel basically all of us need to wash our clothes on top of the people that are already staying in the hotel they also probably need to wash their clothes i don't fucking know they're tours they need to wash their clothes too and there's only like two floors i'm pretty sure there was only two floor two or three floors that had a washer and a dryer so me it was either i had we had a laundry room on the third floor or on my floor on the fourth floor i really don't remember so either way i used whichever one was closer i used either the one that was below us or the one that was on my floor i went to i went to go wash my clothes i put my clothes in the washing machine or whatever i go to the lot i go to the lobby i don't even go to my room i go to the lobby so i know that i stay up because it was it was nighttime so i go to the lobby with my friends to make sure that i have my alarm on to make sure that i'm up so i can go change my shit they, all of my friends could attest to this. We we're all downstairs because we're all washing our clothes and shit. So we're all like actively washing our shit. I go um check on my clothes or whatever. My clothes are not done. I'm literally going up and down the stairs checking it every five and ten minutes. I just didn't want to wait in the laundry room by myself because I am an introvert and I'm fucking scared. I didn't want to be by myself. Like, hello. So I was just going up and down the fucking elevator like every like 10, literally I was leaving the conversation like every 10 minutes. I went like two or three times and they weren't done. By the time that I went and they were done, I went to look at the dryer. Somebody's shit was in the dryer. So I'm like, what the fuck? Whose shit was in the dryer? Since when we start just using individual dryers? Like if you, if you got something in a washing machine, the dryer above it, should that not just be, should, should that not be yours? Why would somebody be washing clothes and use, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like that's not really fair, but whatever i'm just like okay so do i just leave my stuff so i just left my stuff there and i go up there and i check again like every five or ten minutes to go see if their shit was done i literally wait like 30 minutes and then it was a different load it wasn't even the same load anymore i could tell by what was in the thing it wasn't even the same load so at this point i'm like okay bro like now you're playing on my top so i'm like do i go tell the front desk or like what do i do so i'm just like i'm gonna just wait until their shit is done i wait five or something minutes i'm like fuck it i'm just about to go See if it's done. If it's not done, I'm about to go to the front desk. So I go up there. I walk into the <laughs> I walk into the laundry room. I look in the wash machine and I'm like, what's this? It's something blue. I'm like, I don't got it's like a light blue too. I don't got shit that's light blue. I don't wear a light blue. So I'm like, what the fuck is that? So I'm looking in there more and I'm like, that's not even my shit. So I'm like, where the fuck is my shit at? I look in the dryer. That's not my shit either. I look to the side. No, I'm about to walk out and I look down. Why the fuck are my wet clothes on the floor of the laundry room? It's me and my friend Tiffany. And I'm looking. And I look at her. And I'm like, who the fuck? Literally, I remember. I was just like, who the fuck? Who the fuck? That is literally all. I, I said it like three times. Then, in my ear... I hear girl like it sounds like about three or four girls skedaddling running they start laughing and they run immediately I hear bitches running I'm running too bitch where are you I'm, I'm here where are you because you, you're trying to be funny I can be funnier so she's so they run 
or whatever and I run I see where they go I see the door close I go to the door I'm pretty sure it was either room 405 or room 415 it was some shit like that so I go I, I don't say nothing I'm just listening and one of the bitches go oh she's so mad huh <laughs> giggle 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 I'm like what the fuck what's so funny so at first I drop it I'm like all right bro bitches trying to be funny whatever so I just go get my clothes. I'm mad as fuck. Like I'm heated as a bitch. Like I'm mad as fuck. And I just go to the fifth floor and I rewash my clothes and shit. Mind you, the shit, the laundry room things, they weren't expensive, but the coins that you needed, bro, all my, all my life, those were so hard to have. Cause you literally, everybody used them to just pay for shit. Cause it, they were worth like, they were, I think it was a hundred yen, which is like basically like a dollar. Bitch, I was using those. I was using those bitches down. I didn't even realize that I needed them. That, like I needed that many. And now I gotta. And then I gotta go find more. Like who who got coins? Ain't nobody trying to give. Ain't nobody trying to give you a hundred yen coin because everybody needed to watch this shit. You ask anybody? Nah, you're not getting no coin from that. So then I go back to my room or whatever. I'm like, bro, like who the fuck did this? Like whatever, whatever. I'm trying to figure out. At first I was gonna drop it, but then I'm like, nah, bro. Like that's mad disrespectful because you could have just like not fucking did that i don't know that's like that's not have you ever been into a hotel ever like bitch you don't have the authority to do that shit and when i go back up there to the floor that i originally was washing my clothes in i see this girl that's in my group and i seen i seen her walking on the same floor and she was like laughing and giggling and i look at her and like she's like laughing and stuff and i'm like what the fuck is she laughing at because like i'm like literally my face was like like, I look mad as fuck. Like, I already have a resting bitch face. But at this point, I look mad as fuck. Like, I know what my face looks like. And she's just laughing. Like, she sees me and she just keeps laughing. So, I'm like, bitch, what the fuck is funny? So, now I'm thinking it's her because, bitch, what are you laughing at? So, then I go back down to the lobby or whatever to the calf. And I'm like, y'all. I was like, I think it's that bitch. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say her name. And I turn. Oh, you're right there. So I literally go to her. One thing about me, I don't give a fuck. If I got a question, I got a suspicion or something, I'm going to ask you. The worst thing you can say is no. Like what? Like I had no defining proof that it was her. So if she told me that it was not her, I was going to believe that it wasn't her. Because like like I said, I had, been I had talked to her a few times and she was in my group. So like the only reason I thought that it was her was because she was laughing. So if she genuinely says, oh, like it wasn't me, I'm going to let that be because like... I have no reason to believe that it was you besides that. And if if I'm tripping, I'm tripping I, and I'll say that. So I literally go to her and I'm like, was it you? Like, was it you? And she just looks so like, no, it wasn't me. Like, I don't know nothing about that. And I was just like, okay, okay, I'm sorry. I called you out your name, that's my bad. And I turned around and I went back to my friends. And I, I, I even went out of my way to apologize to her like two or three more times. Cause I genuinely did feel bad. Like that wasn't you. Like, and I did call you, call you out your name. Like that's, that's my bad. So I go up there. This time I ended up going up there with Tiffany. Thank God I went up there with her because if not, I would not have a witness to genuinely say that like throughout this entire interaction, I really, I really, I really kept my shit together. I go into the laundry room and I see, I see Barefoot Bandit and I'm like, hey, do you know who's in, who's in room da 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 da? She's like, no, why? No, why? Like what happened? And I already the way that she pressing me about what i'm asking about i'm like all right she knows something but i'm not about to press her because I, really, I don't i don't know her like that i feel like she has no reason to put my shit on the floor so like i'm not about to press her and i don't know her so i'm just like oh nothing happened like just i was just wondering like who's in this room and she's like and i'm walking towards the room but she kind of follows me and she's like what do you like what happened like what happened she's pressing me she's pressing me so then i end up turning around and i go hey like did you put my clothes on the floor and she goes yeah Yeah. That bitch said it with confidence. The bitch said it like she she really like the big dog. Like, yeah, yeah, I did it. So what? Bitch, I'm gonna tell you what. The fuck? Like, she really said it like, yeah, bitch, and what? Girl, who are you? What do you mean? Like, yeah, what do you mean? Yeah. Bitch, what do you mean? Yeah. The fuck? So then she said, she said, yeah. So I was like, why? I literally was like, why did you do that? Like the look of confusion on my face, I just remember I was literally just like, but why though? <laughs> and she was like, she said, I kid you not. You took 10 minutes to come get your clothes and there's other. 
I'm sorry. I'm sorry, it's the laundry room police. I didn't know I was being fucking counted down. Maybe you should have been counting whoever the fuck put their stuff in the dryer for two hours. Maybe you should be counting that shit down, not me. Girl, what? Cause I took 10 minutes? What are you talk? What are you yapping about, bro? Bro, what are you yapping about, bro? What is she yapping about? So she was like, um, cause you took 10 minutes. So that's how I know she watched me put my, my shit in the washing machine. And then she like waited a little bit to do that. Because like I said, I had went up there to see uh to see if my clothes were done and if they weren't done I was gonna wait a little bit more and if they still weren't done I was gonna go to the front desk so boom she's like yeah yeah I did it you waited you you took too long to do it I've been waiting for 10 minutes to to wash my clothes da, 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 da. and I'm like literally she when she said 10 minutes I was like you waited 10 minutes and she was like yeah not everything um revolves around you what bitch you're a hypocrite what are you even talking about she said not everything revolves around you other people need to what bitch what are you talking about you waited 10 minutes i've been waiting way longer than that and i was gonna do it the right way and go to the front desk to complain about that because like i know everybody is trying to watch their shit so when she said that she was already starting to get aggressive with me and i already know the type of person that i am if you know me in real life, I don't take disrespect lightly. I don't take you talking to me any type of way lightly. If I feel any ounce of animosity in your tone of voice, I'm on 10 already. I'm working on that. I'm definitely working on that. But if I hear any, toward, any sort of anything, I'm already on my shit. I'm already popping my shit before you could even think about popping yours. Like if I hear anything like that, I'm already, I'm already up there. So I know how I am. I know that I'm black. I know that she's white. I know that I'm in a foreign country. I'm not about it. I'm not even about to go there. So what I do is, mind you, like I said, I only know her from the barefoot situation and talking to her in passing. I don't know this bitch. So I take a picture of her to send to my program leader. I'm gonna call my program leader M. M. I'm gonna call the second program my second program leader. I'm gonna call her L. I don't fucking know. M and L, M and L, okay? So I take a picture of the girl. I sent the picture to my program leader and I immediately deleted the picture. Like I don't have any trace of that picture on my phone, in my messages, in like I don't have the picture. Immediately after I pull out my phone to take the picture, the girl starts screaming. They start screaming. I'm like, what the fuck? I could literally, I can insert a video. If I can find it, I'm gonna insert the video my friend took while they were in their whole hotel room down the hall. She could literally hear them screaming. They're screaming delete the picture of me i don't want you to have the picture of me so i'm literally when she starts screaming i literally look at tiffany's like kind of like farther away like behind her and i literally look at tiffany and i'm like i literally go why are you screaming i never raise my voice i never raise my hand nothing so people start being like what the fuck is going on outside again i'm not being aggressive i'm not i'm not screaming back that is a key point that is a fucking key factor in this fucking story i am not screaming back at her i am not the energy that she's putting out to me i am not giving back to her i i'm literally not getting her, giving her the satisfaction of me screaming at her i'm not doing that at all Please understand that. I am not screaming back at her. I am not being aggressive with her at all. She's screaming. People start coming out. <laughs> this fucking, this one, um, <laughs> this one program leader, the door opens. She sees that she's screaming at, screaming at me. I look at her. She just goes and she cools the elevator. <laughs> that shit was funny as fuck. In the moment, I didn't really like. But after I re re rewatched the situation in my head, that shit was funny as fuck. Cause she's so real. Cause like, what the fuck was going on there? Then um another program leader comes out. 
I'm a name. I'm just. I'm gonna just call him Glasses. I'm gonna call him Glasses. I go to tell. I go to say very calmly what's what's happening. I'm literally calmly speaking to him. She's screaming. Literally, when he walks out, she's screaming, and I'm just kind of just like. The first thing he does is like as he asks what's going on, he turns to her, and immediately he starts catering to what the fuck she needs immediately he just he just immediately thinks that she is the victim in this situation and she's just he's just like oh okay 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 and then he's like let's go downstairs i'm not fucking going downstairs bro do you see how she's acting there's no fucking way i'm going downstairs so then i go into the elevator me and tiffany go and at first i'm talking to tiffany and i'm just like bro bro and i'm like laughing because if you know me i don't take shit serious so i started laughing and then as i re like rewatch the situation in my head i'm like what the fuck just happened so then i'm like bro and then i'm like bro and then i start getting mad as fuck because in that throughout that whole situation i have to bite my tongue and i know if i start yelling back at her then it becomes a situation where we're like we were just fighting that's not what the case was so i kept my mouth shut i'm the type of person like i'm very outspoken so when i have to bite my tongue i don't like that shit so when i went into the elevator and i was like bro what the fuck i can't even like bro what the fuck i started screaming we were about to go back to the calf but then i'm like fuck bro no this bitch got me fucked up like if we was in the states blah, 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 and i'm going off or whatever and so then tiffany's like oh bro we can't we can't go to the cafe like you have to go to your room you have to go to your room and i'm just like bro like i'm not even listening to her for real because i'm just so like I'm, i just feel so fucked up right now so then i end up going to my room and i'm like crying i immediately call my moms no i call the program leader first i call pro my program leaders first and i'm like cr i'm crying i'm mad as fuck i'm like bro she put my clothes on the wash she put my um wet clothes on the floor and then she's screaming at me the program leader with the glasses he came out and he immediately started catering to her on some like microaggression type shit and i'm just like i'm i'm going off on the phone and they're like okay okay what like that's so fucked up like oh my gosh like da, 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 da. they're trying to help and i'm just like i'm about to call my mom but like that's the situation right now like just to let y'all know like i didn't do anything wrong i don't know how to, this is like what's about to happen but i didn't do anything wrong I call my mom. This is when I really start breaking down. And I'm just like, bro, like I can't do, I can't even do anything. Like she disrespected the fuck out of me. And then now all these people are looking at me like I'm some aggressive like girl and I didn't even do anything. She was the one that was screaming at me and everybody's looking at me like I'm like some bad guy. Because when the guy came out, he didn't mean to, but the way that like he looked at me and then he looked at her, you could just tell that it was just giving oh what the fuck did she do and my mom like my mom literally starts crying because she knows how i am i don't really like when i get upset like that it's for a reason it's not it's not for no reason like i get if i get mad like that there has to be something behind it so we're all just like it, it's just it's just a lot right now like my mom she can't do anything she don't play about her kids so her her not being here with me being able to like help the situation was really hard for her so I didn't want I didn't want to prolong the situation because I just knew how it was affecting her personally. So I just I just I just wanted to dead the situation. After I got off the phone with my mom, I'm just like, alright, bro. So then after I get off the phone with my mom or whatever, I stay in my room for a while. I stay in there and I'm chilling. M meanwhile, she, the girl Barefoot Bandit is downstairs talking to the program leader. So she's painting whatever story she want to paint. In hindsight, maybe I shouldn't have let her do that, but also I know how I get. And if I would have went down there, it would have just been us just fighting. And that's exactly what I didn't want. Okay, so she ends up talking to him or whatever. And I think at one point he ends up leaving or something because my friends start texting me while they're in the calf that she's downstairs with her groupies talking about me, calling me ghetto and saying that I must be from New York. Basically just calling me like a loud ghetto bitch, basically. That's what she was calling me. Later on, I end up talking to the program leader. Like, it's like my program leaders, like all of the program leaders that are in charge of each groups, and then the program leader, like this one white man that is in charge of all of them. To this white man, I'm gonna call you Ollie London. I'm gonna call him Ollie. I'm gonna call him Ollie because I have a genuine suspicion that that nigga thinks he's Japanese for real. Nigga, you're not. You're not. So boom. 
he sent me down in the calf or whatever. Mind you, they have already had their individual conversation. She has already painted the picture that she she's already she's already told the story that she wants to tell. The story where she didn't do shit wrong. When I sit down, it's me in front of him and her beside him. It's them two than me. So I should have already knew what the fuck was about to go down. I did know, but it's like, damn, like what the fuck? I see that my friends are like diagonally in front of me and behind them. They can't see them, I can see them. I'm sitting at the table or whatever and my hands are crossed like this and my face is straight. My hands are in front of my mouth. My arms are on the table and my hands are in front of my mouth so that he can't see that I'm laughing at him. Like I'm not laughing at him, but I'm laughing at them. But if he was to see me laughing, he would just assume that I'm laughing at him. So I'm like, I don't want to be disrespectful, but I also know I'm not going to be able to contain my laughter. So I'm covering my face like this. So he asked me to tell my side of the story. I'm like, okay. I start telling my side of the story. Immediately, the bitch in the corner starts yapping and cuts me off. And I just stop talking. Bitch, I'm not about to, I'm not about to, like, don't piss me off. I'm looking at her talk like she's yeah she's not yapping she's not talking about anything but she's yapping she's literally just coming up with excuses for herself the bitch is yapping she's not saying anything important bro she's she keeps talking he tells her okay you can you like you can just be quiet so I keep going she interrupts me again I get quiet again yappa 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 he tells her can you be quiet again I start again the bitch keeps yapping Bing, yappa 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 not saying shit she's not saying anything she's not saying anything so then at this point i look at him i'm like you done told her to be quiet three different times and she still hasn't been quiet there is no point of me continuing this conversation if she's just gonna keep interrupting me what are we here what are we doing here so then he said like can you just be can you just be quiet can you please just be quiet like shh can you please just be quiet? So gentle and, and nice and sweet to her. He's just, can, can, you be, can you please just be quiet? And I continue my story, but she interrupts me again. This time, the bitch stands up out of her seat and points her finger in my face. I watched this bitch get up out of her seat. I looked at her as she's yelling in my face, pointing in my face. I look at him. I look at her. I look at him looking at her. She's still standing up out of her seat. Me personally, bitch, you standing up out your seat, that mean you wanna fight. You 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 yelling. You yelling. Your voice is at a high octave and you pointing at my face. Bitch, that mean you wanna fight. I would advise you sit your little ass down in your fucking seat before I molly wop the fuck out of you, bitch. So he turned to her. Can you please just sit down? Can you can you please just sit down? So already she's standing up and shit. I'm I'm mad as fuck. I'm mad as fuck. Cause you just seen what type of time she was on, how she was yelling, how she was pointing in my face, and you don't believe that she was sitting there screaming in my face, even though I have video footage that she was screaming in my face. What are we talking about? What are we talking about? What are we fucking talking about? So then we're talking about the situation or whatever. And he's just like, but how do you know that she did this? How do you know that it was that? How do you know? How do you know that she was laughing? How do you know? How do you know? How do you know? And I'm like, cameras, pull the cameras, do something. Like, I'm not lying to you. Like, why? I have no reason to fucking lie. In what world would I be lying about this? Like, what? And I'm telling him, okay, then pull the footage. And he's just like, no, we're not going to do that. Why? Because you want to save her ass. Okay. Like, what? And then I was saying that she was one of the girls that was laughing and that ran into the room. She was adamant on her not being one of the girls that ran into the room. And he's like, how do you know that it was her that ran? I don't know that it was her that I ran. I don't give a fuck that if she ran in the room or not. I don't care if she ran in the room and laughing or not. Either way, she admitted to putting my clothes on the floor. I don't give a fuck if she was in the room. I don't care. I don't care if she was laughing or not. I don't care if her face was serious as fuck when she was doing it. She still did it. I don't care. But he keep like he keep pressing me as if I'm doing something wrong he keeps saying why do you keep a cute like why 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 like he keeps pressing me like why aren't you giving her the same energy so at this point I'm mad as fuck I'm like so I go like this I'm talking or whatever when I'm when I'm telling the story I'm talking or whatever I do this hand motion right I'm not even like peeping that I'm doing this shit like I, literally like I just I didn't even realize that I just did it like that like I'm black I talk with my hands. Everybody, I'm, that is, 
that is how that works. It's a black, it's a black vernacular thing, right? This nigga looks me in my face. He looks me in my eyes. Not only does he look me in my eye with just pure, just like disgust on some like, have some decorum. Like what the, why are you getting so angry? He looks me in my face and goes, let's not use any aggressive movements. Let's refrain from use, using any aggressive movements. What? You just watch her stand up and scream in my face and point in my face. Everybody in the room side eyed her. This exact moment was the moment that I realized because I am a black woman, I am not going to be taken seriously. I will not be as respected, especially when it's in a situation regarding a white person. Because how can you sit there, watch her stand up out of her seat, scream at me and point in my face and still tell me that I'm being the aggressive one? I did not raise my voice. I never was aggressive. I was never aggressive. I was actively making an effort to not come across aggressive in this situation because I knew exactly how it would be twisted and I knew exactly how it would be turned. You can call me a lot of things, but you can't fucking call me stupid. I'm not dumb. I know exactly how the world works and I know exactly how I'm supposed to act in certain situations. Keep in mind, okay? This was happening when I was on a trip to Japan that I worked really hard to get a scholarship for and to get into this program. This was supposed to be a month of my life that was like, that changed my life, you know? That was supposed to be an experience where I came back with nothing but good memories and just good vibes. This situation completely overshadowed my trip. I'm not gonna lie. Because at that time, I was in a deep depression, like a deep two year depression. So me being depressed and already being in a foreign country, and me not share like sharing that with anybody. So if anybody watches this from Japan, like they're that's gonna be news to them. I never, I never shared with anyone in Japan the shit that I was actually going through. I couldn't speak my mind because I knew if I did, it could have been misconstrued. Like it was just so many factors that just this entire situation just completely fucked up. A lot of shit for me, right? I, I end up, I'm pretty sure the rest of that conversation, I don't even really speak. I kind of just, I keep saying just like, okay. And then the part that pissed me off, I guess his balls dropped a little bit during the conversation. He grew a little hair on his fucking chest because he had the nerve to look me in my eye because I had told him at one point, I was just like, I just want the money to rewash my clothes. This nigga gonna say, oh, okay, it's just 600 yen. I can give you 6,000 yen, 60,000. Like, I don't care. I just want the situation to be over with. Like this, I feel like this situation is just so dumb. He tried to make it seem like, oh, I'm just a broke bitch and I'm doing all of this just to get 600, like 300 yen, 600 yen. You think I'm begging, I'm begging for three to six dollars from you? I'm not even that type of girl. I'm not even, I'm not even going to come out of my character to speak on whatever you got going on because you really had me fucked up. You trying to make it seem like I was just some broke, aggressive black bitch that, that couldn't afford. So I, don't piss me off. Don't, don't, don't do that. Cause you said you can give me 600, 6,000. Where the yen at though? Where the yen at though? I still only got 600 yen. You talking about you gonna give me 60,000? Where is the yen? I will take $60 gladly. Where is the yen? You never gave it to me cause you don't fucking got it. Don't piss me off. The fuck bitch, don't piss me off ever in your life. Don't ever, don't ever say some dumb ass shit like that. If you see this, don't ever, don't ever, don't ever do some dumb ass shit like that again. Cause I could really, I could really do you in on. Don't ever say some dumb shit like that ever again. On some real shit, I wish I could say your real name, but I'm not trying to get sued. Fuck you, like for real. I hope, you, I hope you're never a program leader ever again. I hope you never interact. I hope you never ever have to take care of black students ever again because you make them feel so fucking little and insignificant. You make, you make your black students feel like they are not as important. Fuck you, really, fuck you. You try to pretend like you're this woke ass nigga asking us about AAVE and all this other shit and kind of mocking AAVE while you were trying to learn. No, you were fucking mocking it as well. Like you're really a weirdo ass nigga. You're weird as fuck. You're weird. I should have just been a 70 year old girl with good vibes having fun in Japan. Instead, I felt like an insign insignificant ghetto black girl. I have not been in the ghetto since I was nine actually.
I am I am not ghetto. It never gave ghetto. Bitch, I've been living in the suburbs since I was nine. Don't piss me off. It never gave ghetto. Ain't nothing wrong with ghetto, but it never gave that. <sighs> we end up into the situation or whatever. He's like, I don't want to hear about this again. I don't want to hear it. You're going to hear about it again over and over. And I kept talking about it. I don't give a fuck. If somebody asked about it, I talked about it. I don't care. You're not my dad. I don't care. You're not my dad. Like, for real. Like, I don't care. You have no authority over me at this point. You suck. So then, after the situation, um, after the table sit down or whatever, I go back in my room and I literally just start sobbing. I don't call my mom. I don't call anybody. Oh, I don't call my mom yet. I just literally start crying because it was, like I said, it was the exact moment where I realized that, like, black women are just not as not seen as important that's crazy that i had to realize that on a trip to japan like while i'm in high school at 17 first time flying ever first time being out on my own like that's that's kind of fucked up in my opinion and i'm sad that i had to learn it in that way um but i mean it happened i started crying like a lot like i literally i just started sobbing like i didn't even know like i oh my gosh i'm about to start crying it was just a fucked up situation or whatever. So I call my mom. Um, by the end of that conversation, my mom is like, yeah, we're you're gonna take legal action if it, anything further happens. We ended up not taking legal action because the situation, um, it was just like, it's not really worth it. Cause I'm, at that point I was going, coming back home in like a week and a half. So I was just like, whatever. I'm just stuck the rest of the week out and just say fuck it. I should have already knew how the situ was, situation was gonna go based off the glasses program leader alone but like fuck <laughs> like this was it was just like such a shitty ass situation bro and then i heard other stuff about the barefoot bandit apparently the barefoot bandit and their groupies were kind of like bullying like other poc like they were just being like assholes like they weren't physically bullying them but like they were just saying like just mean shit to people in my group like two or three other girls in my group and then also i want to make it known the reason why that person was so mad about the picture was one because i was already vlogging and i think she thought that i was gonna like post her and like at that time everybody was getting like their college stuff ruined from like saying the n-word and all that stuff rightfully so and like she thought that i was gonna like post it I would never post your ugly ass ever in my life. Why would you even think that, you dumbass bitch? I would never even think of posting you. I would lose followers and subscribers from posting your ugly ass. Like, you're ugly as fuck. You're really ugly as fuck. Like, literally, visually, in the inside and out, you're like a really ugly, you're an ugly ass individual. You will never get posted, ever. Who are you? No one cares. Who are you? You're fucking ugly as fuck. They're, the other reason why they were mad at the picture was because they were trans and like they were gonna get body dysmorphia from the picture. How the fuck are you gonna get body dysmorphia from a picture you've never seen? But yeah, apparently that was another reason why they were mad. I don't fucking know. I don't really care either. <sighs> That's basically the story. Um, I'm probably never gonna talk about the story again. I fucking hate talking about this. I don't wanna remember it. I don't even want to rewatch this to edit it because it's just so fucking annoying. And I feel like some people are not gonna understand, but I don't think you'll ever understand until you're actually a black woman and actually a black girl having to experience every single thing that you do being misconstrued into like this narrative just because that's what just people want to paint you as just because just because because i'm such a nice person and to be painted like that is crazy because even after the situation like the last day or the couple days before the, the trip ended people were looking at the situation as if it was like a confrontation like i was a part of drama like i started drama like i was a part of the drama and i was like fighting with this girl and that wasn't that wasn't what happened she yelled at me she kind of bullied me and like but i was still painted as somebody that was being confrontational you know what i mean and that wasn't the case that that literally isn't what happened but to all my black girlies out there you are loved you are worthy you're worth it you're not the aggressive black girl even if you are the aggressive black girl you probably have the right to do so you we do have the right to do so look at all the shit that we go through you know what i mean so i love you i love you even if you aren't black or a girl thank you so much for watching i hope it was at least entertaining and i hope that maybe you learned something from this ollie if you ever see this you know who you are fuck you barefoot bandit fuck you times 20 glasses program leader i hope you've grown a little bit uh you seem like a cool ass guy to both of my program leaders love y'all always 
Thank y'all so much. I love y'all down. Y'all literally my favorite people. Shout out to group five. Y'all some real ones. Most of y'all. Bye.